Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Anuku John Uchenna, and I want to especially welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this channel, I'll be dishing out uh, vital information concerning parasitology and possibly other medical courses as we go forward. So, but for today's class, I want to start with parasitology. What is parasitology? Parasitology can be defined as the study of parasites their host and the interrelationship that exists between them. A student may be tempted to define parasitology as just a study of parasites, but that definition is not holistic because there's no parasite that can exist outside its host. Every parasite is either located in or on the body of the host, and that is why we need to uh, incorporate the host in the definition of parasitology. So parasitology is holistically defined as a study of, the, of parasites their host and the interrelationship that exists between them. Now, uh, the study of uh, parasitology can be divided into uh, three categories, or let me put it this way there are three categories of parasites. Now, depending on the author, some authors can also say that we have two categories of parasites, but I will explain the two. Now, for the first categories, one can say that we have two categories of parasites. Now, we have what we call the helminthe parasite, that is. The, the parasite that look like worm, I will now have the non helminthe parasite. That's when we're going to talk about the protozoa. Now, one can also say that we have three categories of parasites. The first one is called the uh, protozoa, the second one is called the plate helminthes, then the third one is called the nematoda. So, these are the three layers or three categories of parasites we are going to be looking at in this channel. Now, I will start with the introduction. In every ecosystem, organisms interact with their environment, and not just with their environment, but with other organisms in the ecosystem. Now, the interaction between organisms, between organisms of the same species, is what we call intraspecific interaction. Whereas the interaction between organisms of different species is now what we call interspecific interaction. Now, the living together and the interacting together of organisms is what we now call symbiosis. You know. Uh, for in several quarters, some people think that uh, mutualism is the center of symbiosis. No, mutualism is a type of symbiosis. So the general term for interaction between organisms is what we call symbiosis. Now we now have categories or types of symbiosis. We have the one we call forests. And what is forests? Forests is the kind of interaction that exists between two organisms. One is known as a forum, and the other is known as the, as the host. Now. The forum to bring the smaller organism is mechanically being carried by the host without any metabolic interrelation that exists between them or existing between them. Now, what does it mean? It means that the forum does not in any way feed from the host, but the host carries it mechanically. Now, it, for example, is when you see bacteria being carried by fly. Sometimes the fly does not even know that it's carrying a bacterium because the weight of bacterium on the fly is negligible, it's infinitesimal. So that is what forests is all about. Now, after forests, we now have one called commensalism. Now, in commensalism, you discover now that it is also a kind of interaction or association that exists between two organisms where one benefits, the other neither gains nor loses. Now, I usually give this analogy to my students. Now, take commensalism. Uh, like this, you have you have a mirror in your compound, and uh, a, when you're done preparing for work or for school, you use this mirror to check yourself. Now, other members of your compound now check themselves when they're uh, done preparing for work or for school with that same mirror. Now, they are gaining from that uh, association because they are, they are, they are, the mirror is, is beneficial to them. But you, as the owner, you neither gain nor lose because they don't break the mirror. So that's the typical layman uh, uh, interpretation of this thing called commensalism. But once we are studying parasitology, now we are not going to use an example that is uh, uh, related to the course we are studying, which is parasitology. And that example is what we call uh, Sarcomonas tenax and the Entamoeba gingivalis. These are two protozoa parasites, or what we call commensals, that live in the mouth of humans. Now, when you are done eating food, they feed on the droplets of food particles. Now, they benefit from that association, but because they uh, don't cause you disease, you neither gain nor lose, 
that is a typical example of commensalism. So in commensalism, one loses uh, gains and the other neither gains nor loses. Now the third kind of interaction is now what we call mutualism. In the case of mutualism, we have two organisms in, a, in an interaction, you know, in an association. And these two organisms contribute to the progress of the association. That means that the two organisms benefit. For instance, we have what we call lichen. Anyway, in secondary school, most of you call it lichen. It's not called lichen. It's not pronounced as lichen, but lichen. So lichen is a, a, a product of the interaction that is between algae and fungi. Can you see? Algae makes the food, and fungi makes the nutrient available for the algae to grow. So this kind of interaction is called mutualism. We have other examples of mutualism that I may not mention now. Now, the most the last type of interaction and the most important one is now what we call parasitism. And in parasitism, is a kind of heterotrophic relationship that exists between two organisms. One is known as a parasite and the other is known as a host. Now, the parasite lives in or on the body of the host, deriving nourishment at the expense of the host. Now, that means that with this definition, I can carve out two different types of parasitism. We have ectoparasitism and we have endoparasitism. So when a parasite is living in the host, that is endoparasite, one is living on the host, that's ectoparasite. And we have several examples of ectoparasite. Most of the vectors we are familiar with, the glucina, that is uh, the sister fly, the, the mosquito, and uh, the uh, black fly, uh, and so on and so forth. These are ectoparasites. Now, they uh, feed from the host, from the external uh, part of the host. So they don't live inside of the host. And of course, all the parasites we're going to study from protozoa uh, to pentahemetes to nematoda, to nematoda, they are all typical examples of endoparasites because they live in the body of the host. So I'm going to stop here for today, then the next video will continue.